Hey, before we start this episode of Two Bears, One Cave, Philadelphia. I'll be performing at the Met July 27th. Tickets are still available at BurtBurtBurt.com. Let's start the show. He's Burt Kreischer. I'm Tom Segura. At... <laughs> this is Two Bears, One Cave, the show. That almost didn't get recorded because they forgot to turn the cameras on. <laughs> That's... Tom goes, Tom goes, hey... Should there be red lights on those? And they're like, good call. Do you know what a double punch is? A double punch? Yeah. Is it like a double jab? <clears throat> no, no, no. It's a thing in camera terms. It's when they double punch. Uh, so they turn it on and then they turn it off. They forget that they're recording and they turn it off. Oh. Uh, have you had that on a shoot? Uh, have I had that on a shoot? I've had that on a bungee jump. I've had that on a... I've had that skydiving. I've had double punches all the fucking and then, time. And they're like, hey, bird, that was a double <clears throat> punch. Our bad. Do it again. It gets, this is exactly what it is. You get done and you're, everyone's like, oh, that was fucking amazing. Amazing. And there's one guy with a look on his face that has a secret. And he's just like, and you're like, what's up, Andy? And he's like, dude, I never do this. I double punched. And everyone's like, oh, were the GoPros rolling? Dude, I've had do double punches on GoPros. I've had double punches on everything. Wait, this is what happens is that. They hit it and then instinctively turn it off? Like No, they they punch it and to, to record, and either they forget that they've hit record or it was already recording, and they forgot and they hit again. to think they're, think they're recording now, but they've just turned it off. So they've got the cameras up. There, there's no way for them to know, and they record the whole thing. Dude, I've double punched shit. Dude, I, I, I wonder how many people have double punched homemade porns and don't know the term. They just call themselves a fucking idiot. Wait, you double punched a homemade porn? No, I wish. I wish Leanne. Would she let you record? Uh, no, 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 no. I, you know what I, I got in trouble for is I would, uh, FaceTime her, yeah, and I would be like, just show me your tits, and she'd show me, and I'd record it, and then iPhone started going, a picture's been taken, and you're uh, like, what uh, the uh. fuck, iPhone? <laughs> Do you not have wives? <laughs> Fucking Steve Jobs, if he was still alive, would not allow that. So you would, she would show you the titty on FaceTime though. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> how much sex are you having right now not a lot you said six times a month i know lately it's been nil lately we've been fighting a lot what are you fighting about you name it you're gone a lot no i'm around oh <laughs> what dude me around the house is fucking exhausting i could see that we got into a fight the other night because uh i came back from i came back from uh sober october podcast and yeah. I was high <laughs> and we got into a fight about the pronunciation of turmeric wait did she not know about the r no she didn't know about the r and i said hey i got you guys we were at our friend's house and i bring it in i put a big bag of it down they give me a bag of it and i go guys i got you turmeric and they're like you're saying it wrong i go no actually i'm saying it right and, and leanne's like it's turmeric and i go easy it's written right there and i go Georgia, read that for me. And Georgia goes, turmeric. I go, no, it's turmeric. And they're like, no, you don't pronounce the R. I go, no, you I'm pretty sure yeah. you pronounce the R. And, and then it turned into, you, you guys don't know anything. None of you are on your phones. You don't research anything. No one's listening to podcasts. Everyone can go fuck themselves. I'm the king. I get the big dick. Who am I fucking? <laughs> <clears throat> I wish they had that. I wish they had that in like, like, uh, I always compare you and. You got to be easy to be in a relationship with. <sighs> Dude, I am. I got $260 worth of Chinese food last night. Wait, just because you just wanted everything? I can't I can't say no. Yeah. Like can I start going, but Wait, you want a little bit. For the turmeric, did you leave the podcast studio and then go buy? No, 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 no. Uh one of Joe's guys gave me a bag. I was bragging about that coffee. I'm drinking it right now. Yeah. I was bragging about how great that coffee was, and he goes, It's the turmeric. And I was like, Oh, where do I get that? And he was like, Hold on. And he goes, we got a bunch extra. And he gave me a bag. Dude, I fucking love it. Yeah. Dude, Lance, I keep calling him Lance Armstrong. Laird Hamilton's coffee is fu I want the fucking, because yeah. I think there's butter in it and his coffee grounds are better. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> last night, George had some friends over and they're like, we want Chinese food. And I was like, what do you guys want? And they're like, just uh, the shrimp, popcorn shrimp. And I was like, okay. And then I got scallops and I got filet mignon French style. Does, and, does when you order big style like that, does it make Leanne crazy? Oh, insane. She's like, you're, she starts off with going like, look how many chopsticks they gave us. 
They, they think there's 40 people here. <laughs> I've had that for sushi orders. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know who was the best at that was Ralphie. Ralphie could order some sushi. I remember Ralphie did a special at the Laugh Factory. This is all word of mouth, okay? He did a special at the Laugh Factory, and they did a spread of uh, sushi for, like, craft services. And Ralphie just pulled up a chair to the craft services table Put on a bib, got some chopsticks, and just go, oh, player, get yourself a chair, player. <laughs> you know who told me a story like that who? was uh, Charlie Murphy. I went out to dinner with Charlie Murphy, and he, oh. he took me out to dinner. It's like one of my favorite things that's ever happened, especially because his buddy didn't want me to come. <laughs> like you could just tell he was like, who's the white boy? He's like, he's coming, oh. he's coming. So we, uh, we're sitting there talking about just, I don't know, I think we were talking about food. And... Um, Bruce Bruce came up and he's like, you know, I did one of them big theater shows was just like five cats on the same show. And they have, they had the, the catering table and there's like a mountain, like a thousand wings. And Bruce Bruce just put a chair, tucked some shit in his shirt. <laughs> he ate them all. <laughs> like he ate like hundreds of wings and, oh. would, and would talk to people like, yeah, man, what's up? And then just sat there at the catering table. Oh, I kind of like, want my body to just go, let go of it like that far. Like go. Or to, just, I'm like, where everyone's like, no, that's his thing. He's the fat guy. It would be, can you imagine if. As, as if, as if everyone hasn't tweeted me. No, Bert, that actually is your thing. <laughs> no, that's actually your thing. Why do no, I can't believe you're saying that? But imagine if you were just like doing all the same shit you do right now, yeah. but you were 450. <laughs> see i'm still holding on to my tits like i'm still holding on yeah to like lose the weight get my body looking okay sure do you leave do you live in the delusion that but, 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 you can edit right there yes <laughs> i do not need to continue that sentence you will be in really good shape at like in like in your mind you're like i'm gonna be in really good shape at some point um actually later today yeah <laughs> by friday when we go to can bali I, can yes. i tell you something i, I live in that delusion too. <laughs> I, do. I, I, I believe i'm going to the gym from here and like part of my mind's like yeah I'll, i'm gonna be shredded pretty soon oh dude i know it's not gonna you know what you know what i do you know what is you know what feels better to me than working out mm. buying new equipment Buying what? Buying new equipment. Like gym equipment? Yep, like going to, the, going to Five Star and go, you know what, I need a sauna suit. Yeah. Dude, I bought the best sauna suits. <laughs> I work what? out in sauna suits. It's so great for your body. What's your workout like right now? Uh, right now, four miles a day on that fucking cunt treadmill I have. And I sauna suited up. Dude, that's a lot of work. Every day? In a sauna suit, too. Uh, Brandy Schaub told me yesterday, uh, they're really bad for you. And I was like, yeah, but you, you get off the treadmill skinny. And he goes, it's not real weight loss. That's just water weight. And I went, it's still skinny. And he was like, uh, okay. Did he used to use those? Yeah, they use them to drop weight. Because yeah, you can drop, I mean, you can drop like 12 pounds of water weight. Do you remember the weigh-ins when we did that? The most unhappy I've ever been in my entire life. No, they were horrible. But I'm saying we got, we didn't, we were like, shh, shh, shh. We got on the scale at the end of like eating and drinking. You know what I mean? We weighed ourselves. Yeah. And then we started to drink because we had cut water and I put on nine pounds in a couple hours and you put on 11. Dude, I, I remember the feeling we had when the podcast started and I hadn't had water in like 24 hours. It was horrible. And I was just going like this going, I remember the first sip of water. Can I tell you? So I lost, this is the water bottle you gave me. Yeah. No, but, I, but I lost it. Mm -hmm. So I went to this company, same company, and I bought another one. And they, they're not as good as they were making them three years ago. Really? Yeah. They don't hold uh, coldness the way they used to. Oh, but that, the one I have. It. This water, I lost it in fucking Vegas this weekend. This water bottle is the best water bottle. How'd you bottle. lose it in Vegas? I was fucking... I landed and I was supposed to go to a pool party. So I went into the bathroom to change and I put my water bottle by the toilet uh, and everything was white and it just disappeared. Did you gig this weekend? Yeah, Vegas. Oh, do you like it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Vegas is weird for me because I, uh, I mean, ended up partying pretty hard with Joe Coy. So that was fucking blast. You? Yeah. You want to know something funny? Mm. We go. Joe texts me. He goes, hey, man, we're at Club XS or Club XL or X, X Energy mm. or whatever. So we get in. And it's like bottle service, it's tables. It's like all really beautiful people. Joe's fucking whole family's there. 
So I, I get up on the table with Joe and we're partying, we're drinking and people are like looking at us because we're standing on a table or standing above a table. And then uh, I just rip my shirt off and the club goes nuts. People are taking pictures. Joe's laughing. We're there. We're, I'm standing shirtless for probably 45 minutes and a bouncer comes up and he's like, hey man, I got to have you put your shirt on. And I was like, and Joe starts going, it's the machine. And the guy goes, I know, I know. Actually, can I get a picture with you before you put your shirt on? <laughs> I go, yeah, sure. So Joe grabs the camera, takes a picture of me and the bouncer, and the head bouncer sees that his guy's not doing his work, so he comes up and interrupts and grabs him by the arm. He goes, hey, man, I'm going to need you to... I didn't know it was you. Keep it off. Really? Yeah, and I kept my shirt off for the whole fucking night. Jesus, man. Dude, that's my... Now that's living my dream. Yeah. And that's... yeah, I do believe I will be skinny one day. I think about that so much do you, then, know, do you know how disappointed people will be if you cover up one day oh yeah like if i'm saying i'm not saying like doing a spot i'm saying like a big show like i, I imagine now that the people that go they're like they're like like the one of the like they want to have a good time and laugh but they're looking up they're like their shirt's coming off right dude there's no off. way there is no way i could do it can i tell you my but this is what i'm concerned about I'm concerned that if I do another special shirtless, which I will, I'm afraid that it'll pop up and people will go, oh, I've already seen that one. Yeah, but you know what? You address that in the marketing meeting with them about the stills and about that. Oh, I thought you were going to say with a crazy haircut. <laughs> you can do that too. You can do that too. A big but you should, I think you should open like this. On your next special, when you come out, you, you start, you do a joke, and then you go, yeah. It's staying on, guys. It's a, it's the new. It's me now, and just wait, wait have them all just go like, boo, <laughs> and then, guys, and, guys, guys, guys. I want to talk to you about politics real quick. Yeah, yeah. guys, guys. Hold on one second. I think gun control and a woman's right to her own body. <laughs> hold on, guys, guys. What are you doing? Oh, fuck it. Rip it wow, off. Kill yeah. a beer. Wow. My God, my kids are dumb as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Dude, that'd be huge. Dude, I can take a shirt off so fucking quick. I know. Like, you just can. take a look at this. Yeah. I mean that it comes off so fucking quick. That's it's so ridiculous. fast. Yeah. Like here's me. <laughs> you know, it was, it was so funny. I was talking to Brian Callen and we were talking about you're still working on your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys do did you do their show yesterday? Yeah, I did Fighter and the Kid yesterday. Um I was talking to Brian Callen. By the way, I have a, like a number of theories I want to run by you. Um I was talking to Brian Callen and he was saying, you know, one of the things that fucked my career up when I was younger was that I cared what everyone thought. He said that? He said that, and I agreed. And I was like, dude, I cared. I'd go into an audition and just want to not stand out. Does that make sense? Mm. Like, I remember, like, wanting to, like, just be like, that guy's good. And then guys would go in and just, go, like, I, I told them to go fuck themselves. They couldn't book me. And, I was, and then they'd book it, and I'd be like, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think when I started to truly become myself is when I started performing with my shirt off. I was just like, fuck it, that's who I am. Like, yeah. it's, it's my personality. It's, it's definitely me. Yeah. And I, there are times where in my head, if there's certain people like, uh, m you know, more successful than me that are after me, like I won't take my shirt off at the store because I don't want to like, I don't want to ruffle feathers like Ron White. I, I was humiliated one time. David Spade, I won't take my shirt off because I'm like, eh. But and, you kind of, but part of you has to go like, you know what, you should just stick to who you are and do it anyway. It's hard to stick to who you are. I, I really- is that, Does that go through your mind? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then like, like even Joe will always be like, uh, he, ah, he, had, he had to take his shirt off, huh? Like, I'll make a joke about it. Like, oh. uh, like if I put form of my shirt on, Joe will be like, oh, finally showing a little self-restraint machine and, and he will make a joke about it. But isn't it kind of like, I mean, I'm saying with the specific case of him, that's kind of the relationship, yeah, right? Yeah, like that's, yeah. that's your banter. Yeah. Between me and Joe, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. But my fear is that those guys like, like Spade or Norm MacDonald or, or those yeah. guys that are like at Joe's level would think the same thing he's thinking to make a joke about it, right, but wouldn't, right. they, they don't know me the way Joe knows me. Right. <clears throat> so right. that's where my, my, uh, I had a theory I want to run by you. Okay. Um, virtue signaling is like the big thing. Yes. And I realized what virtue signaling is. I, I realized the energy behind it. Have you ever been, um, have you ever been sitting at your house and you have tickets to sell in a, in a place, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, fuck, 
uh, Philly, the 27th at the Met. I gotta, I need to move tickets for the second show. And you're like, I gotta shoot like a funny video. I gotta shoot something. What virtue signaling is, is those people's want to tweet. Their want to post. Their want to speak. But they have nothing of worth to say. So what they do is they tweet, um, gun control is absolutely fucking ridiculous. We need to get rid of all firearms. And then they go, ah, cool, I tweeted today. Right. It's the energy of wanting to put art out, but having no artistic insights. Yeah, it's it's that. And also the desire for the that approval yes. that comes with saying like, here's where I stand. Here's where I stand is like uh, the the big thing now where like people just want to know your position on these 10 things. Yeah. And then they can go like, that's who you are. And that's why I wanted to play a game called Virtue Signaling for a Friend. So you you do it on behalf of somebody? Like we switch phones. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I get to send a, my what my virtue signaling for you and you get to send your virtue signaling for me mm -hmm. and we just see who gets more traction on it everyone's gonna hate us <laughs> by the way <clears throat> this is this is this leads into all those bullshit fucking branding publicity stunts they do that make me crazy Kevin Hart takes a lie detector for Vanity Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Ask the questions I want to ask. <laughs> what do you want to ask him? Uh, hey, for real, what's it like to work with a rock? Is he a pain in the ass? And just watch it. <laughs> do, you, do you make more money than the rock? <laughs> hey, for real, how many times you cheated on your wife? Ging, 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 ging. Dude, fucking put the questions I want to ask. They're like, anytime they're like, uh, Dak Shepard uh, takes a lie detector test with his wife, uh, Kristen Bell. And you know their publicist has vetted that to the... T they're like, uh, no, 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 no. Don't ask about Ashton Kutcher. Don't ask about that. No, what they're doing is they're like, that's not a real lie detector, right? <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> okay. You know they're like, oh, that's not plugged in, right? Amy Schumer takes PA's phone and goes through her Tinder. Yeah, sure. Oh. Now, all how about this? Shit. Tom Segura takes PA's phone and signs him up for Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> I'll suck your cock, buddy. <laughs> I would be so good on that. Do you remember what I used to do for you on Grinder? is I made a profile yes. of you and I used it for my phone. I used your name, Tom Segura, and I put your profile. And so I'd go on to Grindr every now and then and people would be like, hit me up, go, hey man, you're in my neighborhood. I want you know, I want to see if you wanted to party. And I'd always go, actually, I'm going to be at the comedy store tonight. Why don't you come find me? <laughs> a good prank, a good like low level prank that you that doesn't that, that the payoff is always like is there's nothing better yeah because you, you know what that what you're talking about right there is i think the heart of real comedy yeah. which is just for the fun of it is it, like the most so fun many, stuff to there's do there's so many comics that don't have fun have, don't have fun i know it's the fucking worst you oh. know what i like like for me the my favorite thing to do like when you're on the road with a comedian is just go like a uh when the waitress comes by here, just be like, hey, I shit my pants. Do you have a pair of pants I can use or something? <laughs> and like, if if they're like, okay, I'm like, this is a like a fun person. Yeah. Or if they're like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, man. Like what, one of my favorite things, it's like one of my favorite memories is doing the road with Potter uh, a couple of years ago and we're boarding and I go, uh, just tell him you're handicapped and uh, like you're blind. So you can board first. <laughs> he and, is blind. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, be like, be like, go like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Zombie it down the. Yeah. Hey. yeah. So uh, he's like, he goes, okay. So I go with him, and he puts his hand on my shoulder, and I go, he needs help to board, <laughs> and and the the person was like, oh yeah, absolutely, like have him <coughs> have him stand right here, and I left him there. Oh. I go, I go you, and then I went back to the other boarding line. And then when they're, they're like, all right, it's time to, to board. Then they, they ask someone, they're like, can you help him get down oh the jet bridge? Oh, my God. Bridge? So then he walked with a stranger down the jet bridge. Oh, the, the, the commitment to that. That's so great. But Dude, that's, that was just for us. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's the, that if you're like a comic and you don't enjoy those moments, I'm like, you're not really. I, yeah, I don't understand people who don't get those moments. Like, those are the best moments. I went the first time I was ever at the cellar. I went up to the bar. Greg Giraldo was there and I wanted to order a drink. And uh, the bartender was like talking to someone on the corner. I said to Jim, I said, uh, hey, what's the bartender's name? And he goes, um, Jim Norton. And he goes, oh, it's Ralph. 
I went, <clears throat> Ralph. 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 And the guy turns and goes, are you talking to me? I was like, yeah, Ralph. And he goes, Tommy. And I look at Jim and he is dying fucking laughing. Yeah, that's fun. What would man. be the best? Let's, let's, let, well, let's sing. Let's, let's just workshop a few virtue signaling tweets that I would set, put out on your phone okay. and, and would get the most traction. The most traction? Well, what's the hottest shit right now? It's oh, gun control, women's the, rights. The abortion law. Yeah, those abortion <clears throat> laws are, are pretty big right no, now. Okay, now what, okay. Wh what direction would you take the virtue signaling? Would you go alt-right or alt-left? Oh, definitely alt-left. Oh, Okay. Are you saying for the biggest reaction? For the biggest reaction. Um, I think on social media with like our following. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Be, a lot of our yeah. fans would be like, I agree with you, actually. Yeah. yeah. You an alt right. <gasps> I, th I think. Yeah. No, I think they would go. I think okay. you'd have to go. Now, gun control is the interesting one because that one, you know, I see. I think that a lot of people that like are, are fans if you did the alt-right abortion stuff, they would be like, this is kind of, like, they wouldn't think that, because those, those laws are fucking kind of insane. Like, That's they're why, like, yeah. like, they're like, uh, no, no protection for incest and rape. <laughs> so it's like, if you're like, it's, it's how it's gotta be. I mean, it's. They're like, no, they're like, uh, yeah, no, no, no uh, abortions for incest and rape in Alabama. By the way, two of the most popular ways to procreate in Alabama, incest yeah. and rape. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, my wife's from Alabama. I can make that joke. Yeah. <laughs> Not really, but close enough. <laughs> um, I think gun control would be the one where you would lose a lot of the fans. Let's like, where they'd be like, yeah. bro, I remember. I remember when I liked you. <laughs> PETA. Stick I backed to jokes. up PETA. Yeah. I backed up PETA one time. And I said something about dogs, about hunting dogs or something about hunting. Or I, and and I and then I said to this and then this guy wrote back. He goes, "Bro, uh, uh, keep your mouth shut. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about." And I looked at his profile and it's him with his dog. I go, "Hey asshole, you're sitting with your dog in your profile picture." And he goes, "Hey asshole, read the name of my fucking handle and it's West Virginia Bird Dog Hunter." And I was like, "Oh yeah, sorry, bro." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you really wanted to get traction on mine, you could do like some special needs. Oh. Tweets, like any apology. If you any apology would like, if you were like, guys, I for the longest time I have been speaking inappropriately. Oh my god, you'd be like, what the fuck happened to you, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people or people would go like, this is a really particularly mean troll. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Be like he's not serious i'd much rather troll people than virtue signal yeah of course oh trolling people is the fucking ultimate it's so fun it's like the fun thing we're talking about I dude mean, oh especially when people like when people just are keep dragging along and they're oh, like yeah. wait I, I don't dude i don't mean it's probably this is going to come out later but i've been doing that shit for like this this theo stuff you know oh, like god did it's... you see when i did the one where i go hey do you guys have any suggestions of guests we should have on the show dude and it was <laughs> theo what about theo theo yeah, gate yeah. theo gate theo gate and then i was like hey i got your suggestions we got your top jesselnick yeah, sebastian <laughs> they were like what the fuck man dude, dude that was whole, dude i did i got that and i quote tweeted it and i wrote oh please get at the miz on i would love to see him and christina talk about their days on road rules and people are like, oh, what about Theo? He was on road rules. I mean, how dumb are, I mean, like that's, that is the fun of trolling. But when the people are like, like, cause I, I identify with in those things, like somebody goes, you can see in the comics, someone will be like, dude, you're, you're ignoring us on Theo. And someone <laughs> writes to them, don't you think it's obvious you fucking idiot? Like, oh. like I, that's who I identify with. The person who's going like, how do you not get this? How do you not oh, get how obvious this the is? The best, the best troll ever is Colin Quinn. Oh my God, his he, whole his whole whole feed is trolling. It's just trolling people. I yeah. love it. I love it. I, I'm I may love that more than a funny tweet. Oh my God, a he's good like, troll. There's nothing like the sound of laughter to wake up to in the morning. Like his shit is just so absurd. Uh, t just type in best Colin Quinn troll tweets. I'm sure they have or a just fucking best website. Colin just Colin Quinn. We can actually probably go through what you were doing, but um, yeah, just scroll down. Scroll. Keep going. 
I like when he's like, when he uh, gets real sincere oh. about his craft, you know? What's See, say anything there? about oh, the military is helpful. Then I will awesome. return um, the new special. Someone says that we love the new special. We've got room for you on the couch. And he goes, then I will return and you'll be on the couch and I'll be in bed. I'm CQ from the Lost Tribes of the Quins of Belfast. And I expect a hero's welcome and nothing less. All right, that's kind of like not what I'm talking about, but. Can I tell you my favorite, the hardest I've ever laughed, Colin Quinn? And this is coming up on Something's Burning. Yeah. <clears throat> I asked, he went to a summer school. I I'm, I'm, know I'm telling this story wrong, but I think I'm telling it better. Um, he went to summer school one year in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. So all the kids, and it was like summer school for kids that were, weren't bad enough to go to jail, mm -hmm. but weren't good enough to not have to go to summer school. He went to one? He did. Mm -hmm. And he, and it was all the boroughs had to go to this one school. So um, he's like, imagine the Bronx, Brooklyn, uh, fucking, uh, uh, Long Island, New York City. So everyone was dressed differently. Everyone like, he's like the Guidos, the Italians, the Puerto Ricans, the blacks. He goes, everyone came in. And go the, to the top one. Go. Yeah. There we go. And uh, and he's he's and I, he was like, the black kids were the funniest. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah. He had told this. I made him tell this again. He said, one day uh, there was a guy in his class named Godfrey, a black kid named Godfrey. And they were all in class, the bell rings, and everyone's about to get up, and the door opens, and it's one of Godfrey's friends, another black guy. And the guy looked in the room and goes, hey, Godfrey, your dad says leave the shoes by the door, he needs them for work, and shut the door. And everyone was like, you're so poor, you only have one pair of shoes? <laughs> Dude, I love shit like that, what's this? This is a Colin Quinn tweet, it says, the conflict between Arabs and Israelis is not just about land, but in my opinion, there's a religious aspect that can't be ignored. <laughs> This is perfect. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, that's uh, what else does he have here? Hey, girls, if you want to look more appealing to me, forget the push up bras and push up the sides of your mouth. A smile <laughs> is the new tits. <laughs> Fuck. Man. Oh, my God. Um, I'm not a racist who believes in white privilege, but I do believe very strongly in white power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. How much of a savage was he with that profile picture? You know, back in the day? Yeah. Dude, he must have been an... He's crashing a beer on his head. He's like a fucking young Bert. Dude, you know he partied hard as fuck in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he doesn't party at all. He like went sober. How much fun would, okay, <clears throat> name it, okay, 10 comedians, me and you are two of them, so now eight comedians, mm -hmm. slumber party in a cabin up in the woods, Whew. just like camp, right? Yeah. And we get one camp, one, okay, one comedian's the counselor who's like, follow the rules, hey guys, lights out, no more talking. Right. Comes in, clicks, name the eight comics that are in the room with us to bus balls all fucking night and then name the camp counselor. All right. Well, first of all, it's like, who do you want to hang out and laugh with? Right. David Tell, Colin Quinn. David Tell, Chad Daniels. Chad Daniels. Um, Todd Glass. Todd Glass. I'm trying to think. Hold on, hold on. Who makes me, who makes you giggle every time you see him? Brian Callen. Callan's a lot of fun. Callan's just hardcore giggles. You need those snipers. You need like a like a one-liner zinger, like a Todd Berry or someone. Yeah, yeah, To like yeah. throw in. Now we need a couple girls in there that can bust balls and hold it. Um, you who do, can bust balls? I would have said Sarah, but I won't say Sarah because that's too obvious. Morgan Murphy. She's hilarious. Morgan Murphy. Oh, I mean, if you're bringing her, you got to bring Zach with her. Oh, my God. Zach Galifianakis. That is the ultimate. How about a little diversity? <laughs> it's a summer camp, Tom. <laughs> so, so who's the camp counselor that just gets fucking irate? Uh, better be a black guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> who's a very uptight? Not uptight, but like who can be imposing? Alonzo. Like, Oh, no. What if he came in? He was like, shut the fucking lights off. We'd be like, okay. 
do those those camp camp evenings where you would sit up at night and just yeah. the jokes would keep going Dude, i remember being on one of those and they had someone's dad as the the council like the monitor yeah. and he slept in like the adjoining room and we were just laughing and laughing and laughing <sighs> and it and we kept going and i just remember him going shut the fuck up <laughs> and i laughed so hard at him saying that I, I almost fell out of the bunk dude just like just an adult yelling at you like we we're young dude we we're like 10 <clears throat> the hardest the hardest i've ever laughed was my senior year we went to windy gap did you guys go to windy gap do you have young life mm -mm. we went to windy gap and it was maybe 15 of us all two different schools jesuit and plant in a, in a in a men's bunk and sal uh carinante got drunk as fuck okay mm -hmm. and they were sending him home so they were going to put him on a bus and make him take a bus home because he had gotten drunk. <clears throat> and so we were up until six in the morning. No one slept. We were in six in the morning and they were coming in and out. And they were... This is high school? It was so funny. I remember the hardest I've ever laughed. They go, Sal. And he's like, hey, man, I don't feel good. Jimmy, Jimmy Kaysen was the guy's name. And Jimmy's like, Sal, I understand that. And he goes, D -d -d Sal goes, Jimmy, is Mike here? And the guy, Mike, you know, Christian leader comes around right here. Sal, what's up? And he goes, Mike, your mom's a whore. And just <laughs> fucking we're on the floor. We're on the fucking floor. They're like, Sal, tell us who you got drunk with. Tell us who you got drunk with. And he goes, uh, D's. And they're like, D's who? And we are shaking. Yeah. And, and, and he's like, it, it was D's. I think D's is still out there. And we're dying. We're like, waiting oh my for God, it. waiting for it. And they're yeah. like, Sal, give us a last name. D's who? And he's like, D's nuts. And we... <laughs> We're, eight, we're 17 years old, and we are crying laughing. I remember this one kid, Mike. I don't remember his last name. He goes, hey, someone go get Jimmy. Well, by the way, we're still up. He goes, someone go get Jimmy. And so we go, hey, Jimmy, Mike needs you. And he comes in, and Jimmy's like, what's the matter? And, he's, and he turns the lights on. He goes, no, 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 turn the lights off. Jimmy, I think I have hemorrhoids. My ass is burning. And he had sprayed hairspray on his ass cheeks and lit them on fire. And in the dark, we are like, oh. By the way, none of those guys turned into comics. That's the weird thing. Yeah. It's like that sense of humor didn't translate to like, oh, I'm going to do this for a living. Yeah. Do, Boomer, do you ever work with Boomer Nichols in, in uh, Arizona? Why do I know that name? I must have done something with him. Oh, right. He was so, f I, f I forced him to get into comedy. I did my first special and they're like, were you the class clown? And I said, no, actually this buddy, this guy, Jay No, Nichols. wait, did he come with us to the, to the FSU game? No, no, no that's Eddie Fernandez. He was the, dude, I know, I knew some of the funniest fucking people in the world that never did stand up. Yeah, no, of course. It's, and it's so funny because they make you laugh so fucking hard. But it's a, diff it's a different thing. Dude, Eddie Fernandez moved out to LA and he would do stuff like there'd be a table full of hot girls and he'd go over to the waiter and he'd go, hey man, send them a pitcher of ice water with five cups. And so the guy would come over and he goes, uh, this gentleman would like to buy you a drink. And he'd go, it's on me. And then he'd bring over a pitcher of water with five cups. And Eddie goes, stay hydrated. <laughs> and these girls would be like, huh? I remember him going up to girls with a piece of paper and going, can I get your autograph? Really hot girls. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. They'd sign it and he'd go, who are you? I told you about the time he kidnapped that girl, right? That time he kidnapped the girl? I've never told you this story. I don't remember. I probably would have remembered another kidnapping story. We were... I was I was getting ready to graduate. He had already no he had, he had he had already graduated, but he still had his place in Tallahassee. Yeah, it's like a Wednesday night, and we we're, we're doing nothing. And he's like, uh, "Let's go over to the ATO house." We were, or our fraternity was. He goes, "Let's go over to the ATO house, see what's going on." And so we just gonna pull over there, fuck around, take a dip, drink a beer, or whatever. Yeah. And there's a full blown party, and we had not know we're like we're kind of out of the fraternity system. At the How time. great was dipping? Remember that? Man, Can I, I, I we were talking about it yesterday. Again. I know. You know when I started dipping. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was in Florida. Yeah, uh, one of the guys. Two days at football. Well, it was it was uh, it was it was during that time, but it, like it was the first time I ever did it. I did it driving, and I started to get such a buzz. I was. Like, it is the oh, greatest it, buzz in the world, especially that first one. And you're like, holy shit, you can do because I thought you get high forever on it, and I, and I actually, you know, that that burn feels addictive. You know that when you put yeah, it in, you start. Fuck yeah feel tearing up fibers in your gums mm. and uh tobacco is is flowing into your bloodstream man i i fucking it was disgusting though remember like these right here just be full of brown water <laughs> you ever take a swig of your spit 
Tempe, Arizona, <laughs> working with Jay Moore and Walter Gauze. And I decide I'm going to stay the night. They decide they're going to drive over the night. I'm going to fly home in the morning. We get done this Sunday show. They get in the car. I'm heading over to the bar and I get a call from, from Walter. And he goes, Jay would like to talk to you. And I go, well, what's going on? And he goes, <clears throat> if you ever spit in a cup in my car, take it with you out of the car and don't leave it in the fucking console. And he goes back to Walter. Walter's dying laughing. Jay just took a big swig of your dick Ugh. spit. The nastiest, dude. Dude, <clears throat> I miss dipping so much. We should do an episode where we take a dip. Let's dip And again. walk people through it. Let's dip again and, and let's commit to doing it for a month. I'm in. <laughs> I'm so fucking in. I could quit drinking. I, I could, dude, dipping would, I didn't need to drink. When I dipped, I didn't need to drink at all. You know, can I tell you too, I, you do it more than me. I had a cigar over the weekend. I had one last night. Oh, so the thing is like, I feel like I don't get them enough. I should just fucking commit to it. I, I need more vices. I could pull back on a couple. Do you travel? Do you travel with your cigars? Uh, yeah, but I, I don't. Sm I didn't smoke any on the tour. Uh, I smoked one in Tampa uh, for like a, a promo shoot, but I didn't smoke many. Uh, your pop smokes, right? My dad smokes cigars all the time. Pretty much, I think every day he smokes one. At, at the end of the day, he has a glass of wine, an edible, and a cigar. <laughs> Man, that's fucking living, dude. Yeah, and then he that sends is me. Living. And then he sends me an email about vices and moderation. I'm oh, like, right. oh, sure thing, Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> Do your sisters party? Yeah. Really party? Oh. Really? <laughs> Both? Yeah. I haven't seen them in forever. They. Uh, no, I haven't seen Annie in forever. I saw Cotty a couple times. Yeah, Annie, they both smoke. Like, I remember the first time, like, I, when Cotty was, like, 15 or whatever, and we went to Annie's house, and I was in college, and I come back, I'm maybe, like, 20. Cotty was maybe 14. I'm 24. Annie's 22, and Annie's got a place in in Tampa. And Cotty's, like, a freshman in high school. And they light a joint that looks like one of those Tommy Chong ones. Yeah. And I'm like, and Cotty's just hitting it, just, and I, I'm scared of marijuana at the time. I'm like, uh, and yeah. the, but they party, they'll eat edibles. They fucking really, yeah. I think Annie went through a period where she was eating acid every day in college. Every day. I remember the first time Where'd I was she like, go to school? she went to Florida state uh, for a little bit and then left. She came up to me one time and was like, was like, uh, Hey, I'm, a, I'm maybe a sophomore. She's a freshman. I'm maybe a junior. She's like, hey, what's the deal with drugs? And this is like my moment to be like a big brother to her. Yeah. And I was like, listen, you know, you don't want to get lost in it. I have a lot of friends who are, you know, smoking too much pot. And you want to always kind of be focused and like achieve your goals, stay good in school. You know, but like for the most part, you know, if you want to have fun, a little fun, you know, it's not bad every now and then to take a hit. She was like, okay, cool. And so then like the next weekend, she's like, uh, hey, just so you know, I... I tried drugs and she was like I was like really and she's like yeah I took a hit of mescaline and I was like uh, <laughs> I was talking about marijuana like a hit of marijuana yeah she uh, she fucking partied but they don't but they they were always they could always do everything in moderation like everything right like they would be like oh yeah I, I don't need it I'm done smoking and then they just wouldn't smoke for a month yeah and drinking neither of them are big drinkers like they'll, they'll have a glass of wine, they'll have a cocktail, but yeah. then they're like, ah, I'm done. I don't feel good anymore. <laughs> if you could change one thing about me, what would it be? <laughs> okay, two. <laughs> I don't know that I would change anything. It's fun. Do you ever think about getting hair transplants? <laughs> I think about it all the time. I thought about it uh, a couple of years ago. Can I tell you what like a big deterrent is for me for anything? Uh, the effort involved for for something. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way about working out. Yeah, no, but I'm <laughs> saying for something that you're like, this is just for for vanity. You know what I mean? Yeah. I go like, I, I'm not going to go fucking have a procedure done. And then they told me like, because <clears throat> it was a friend who had it done. He's like, then you go like once every yeah, whatever, six, eight weeks, and you see him again, and he does this thing to your head, and then I'm like, dude, all this for hair? I'm like, no, nah, I, I I'm good. I want them to just give, I, I want to get uh, stem cells in my, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I interviewed I interviewed Steve Byrne about his new movie, Amazing Jonathan, uh -huh. always amazing, 
And I goes, so like, what did you take out? And he goes, I, I kept out a lot of stuff. And I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, some stuff that I just felt was a little irresponsible that Jonathan was kind of married to. But I was like, I don't want to. And I go, like, what? And he goes, well, you know, he had congenitive heart failure. And then it kind of turned around. And it was mostly because he was buying stem cells off the black market in Mexico. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> He said, he goes, Bert, he, by the way, he, not joking, he goes, Bert, his toe popped off. Like his toe popped off. Like I guess he had like what? His toe popped off. What do you mean? He lost a digit in like from diabetes. Like it just pops off like like one of those cheese things. His toe popped off. I might fucking pass out. It just pops off. It just and so and so Steve said, Bert, he shot stem cells into that toe, and a nub grew back. Can you believe that? And you want to do this for your hair? I want to do this for my hair and just have nubs just. What if little fingers grew out of your head? <laughs> do you know how much I'd love that? You probably I would. would. I would use those fingers for thought bubbles. Like I'd yeah. never wear a hat and this would be me. I'd be like, oh, I have an idea. <laughs> Here, I wonder if, wait, what if you, you, you and you. What would you change about yourself? Uh, my ability, I, I wish I had any ability to sl shut my brain down and, and slow it down. Mm -hmm. Like last night's a perfect example. Perfect example. I don't eat all day. I'm doing really good on my diet, right? I have uh, a light breakfast. I have some coffee. I go do Fighter and the Kid. We had a little glass of whiskey there. And I go, I'm going to go home. I got an interview with Steve at my house. He's already waiting. And I was like, I haven't eaten. I'm going to grab one piece of pizza. It's quick. It's not too many calories. One piece of pizza. I'll eat that. Go into the thing. So I do the interview. I come out and all of a sudden it's like, it's like I can hear my brain going, yeah, like let's, let's start drinking. Let's have a cigar, Chinese food. Come on. Yeah. Like I can hear it <laughs> and I cannot slow it down. And it's like, I drink a, I, I drink a full bottle of wine just by myself. I drink, I eat. I have $260 <laughs> worth of Chinese food splayed out on our table. And I'm just like, almost like a prince at an orgy, just, and just, and, and I, I mean, even with like the egg roll, you know how they give you the sweet sauce and the mustard? Yeah. I put so much mustard on that that I started choking. Yeah, I could see that. On my first bite and I fucking finished it. Yeah. Like it wasn't enjoyable. I'm just like, and you're sweating. And I'm like, sweating. Yeah. And I look at like my daughter's plates and they have like, you know, a little bit of rice, a little bit of this, a little bit yeah. of that. I wish I had some sense of moderation yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. I can't, I, I'm kind of like that with certain things. <laughs> like what? Like food. I don't go like, no, that's just, I mean, like if I talk to myself <laughs> into it, I'm like, okay. But like my instinct is to do it like that. Can I tell you, this is a perfect example. This is my brain to a T. George's birthday he turns 15. Fuck. Turns 15 tomorrow. And, uh, Jesus, that was a close. She, she turns 15? Yeah, she turns 15 tomorrow. What kind of sweet ride are you going to get her next year? Oh, I'm getting myself a car. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting myself a car, like a fun car. Next year. And then year. she can drive one of the bullshit ones we own. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get myself a fucking car. Hey, congratulations, you got that piece of shit car you've been driving in the whole time. It <laughs> smells like Isla's feet. I will be getting a Porsche. <clears throat> Do you, wait, are you eyeballing one? I'm eyeballing Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I have like my eye on nine different styles of cars. Really? I'm looking at uh, like uh, rock climber camper vans. Like mm -hmm. I'm looking, I'm looking at everything. I want to get a pimped out uh, uh, because she can drive. I want to get a pimped out uh, sprinter for her. Yeah, so that she can drive me around. <laughs> I'm thinking about so. So we go for so that she can drive me around. Yeah, like like hey, I need you to drive me to the store and then wait <laughs> wait in the sprinter, do your homework, and I'll be out at two. <laughs> So, uh, and it's going to have like a partition that closes so I don't have to talk to her. <laughs> so, so this is, this is exactly what's, oh, this is what's wrong with me person. in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. George and I, I go, what do you want for your birthday? And she goes, I'd like a new phone. Her phone is like whenever she, we greenlit phones for her, it's yeah. the oldest iPhone you can get. Right. I mean, second <laughs> oldest. Isla's, they were just whatever iPhones we outgrew. Yeah. Isla's is the one where they made the big one. It doesn't even fit in her hand. She has to use two hands to hold it. So she never uses it. It stays in her bed. It's like a TV screen for her. Yeah. So I go to, I go to the um, Apple store, Georgia, and I go, 
I'm, and Leanne's with me and they go, so what are you looking for? I said, what's the top of the line iPhone? They go, an iPhone XS. And I went, awesome, I'll take it. And they go, how much memory? I go, 500 gigabytes. And they're like, cool. And I go, and then George goes, now I got the nicest iPhone in the family. And I go, you know what? Fuck it. Put two in there. I want one too. <laughs> and Leanne's like, what? I go, I'm upgrading my iPhone. I go, we're going on this trip to Bali. I want to have the best camera I have. I want to have the best camera. I want to have the most memory. Put two in there. And Leanne's like, oh my God. So I get home. <clears throat> I go to switch over my iPhone. Uh, I take the SIM card out of this one and put it in the new one. And then I take the new one. I go, I'll give this to Isla. Maybe I'll just give this to Isla. And I look. I already had an XS. You had the top of the I line? Had the t- I had the, I had the, I bought the exact same fucking phone. I bought the same fucking phone, Tom. I didn't, I didn't think it through. I just got impulse. I'm like, yeah. give it, wrap it up, yeah. take it. I bought the same fucking phone. What car are you going to get for yourself? I want to know what you're eyeballing. I have a lot of, I have a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, at first I was like, I'm going to get something cool and fun, like one of those, like, like a Jeep, like, uh, like one of the, the ones, the, the, like ter- the track hawk one, like the ones with the big wheel in the back and the, mm-hmm. rah, 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 rah. okay. Like, kind of like what Joe wanted. And then I was like, oh, you know what I'll get? I'll get a 67 Cadillac convertible, like a big bodied whale that That's I can cool. just fly around town in. And then I was like, I'll look at these. I mean, I looked at a lot. If you, George and, and Leanne and I are on a text thread where we send cars to each, each other. Yeah. Georgia wants, um, Georgia's like, I think I just want like a, uh, like a, a Jeep Cherokee. And I was like, how do you make a kid like this? Who's like, that's what they ask for. Dude, she's never had anything but water in her life. What? She's never had soda. Never once tasted a soda. What? Never once tasted a soda. Doesn't like Coke. Doesn't never had Coke. Won't have it. Probably won't like it. I'm good. Doesn't like juice. Doesn't like Gatorade. Doesn't has tasted them. Doesn't like them. Doesn't like anything. She, the only thing that she tasted and shocked me once. Yeah. We're in, uh, we're in, I forget the Terra, Terra Nia in down in. Terra Nea. Yeah. We're in Terra Nea. Uh, Leanne. This place is great. What? Isn't that place great? Oh, fucking Amazing. Awesome. Especially if you get one of the cottages, like yeah. one of the villas. Leanne and her friend Sandy are going in. We've all been by the pool or whatever. They're going in to take showers. We're all getting ready to go to dinner. And Leanne goes, I wouldn't mind like a fun cocktail. And I go, okay, this is still when I had the first level of this yeah, one, yeah. the good one. Mm-hmm. And so I go, okay, so we don't really have much mixer. So what I do is I take a tangerine. I fill that with ice. I take a tangerine and I shake it up crazy and I destroy the tangerine inside there, right? Peel it, shake it up like crazy, throw vodka in there, shake that up like crazy, take that pour that into a cup with some ice and a little soda water. And I say to Georgia, because I can't go in the shower, I go, take this into your mom, into the shower, take this to Sandy. And Georgia goes, can I taste it? And I was like, well, yeah, but don't take it like a big sip. But you, yeah, you can taste it. Because I'm like, she's going to hate vodka. Yeah. But if she doesn't like soda, yeah, she's yeah. going to hate vodka. And she literally goes like this. That is awesome. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, motherfucker. And she yeah. goes, can I have one? And I was like, no. Like, we're not those parents. We're not those parents at all. But she got dad's genes, it sounds like. <laughs> wait till she, like, I think about this with both my kids. Wait till they have their first drink and the way my brain went, oh, so we're going to slow down for a second, huh? I, I already feel like I, I know what, like, what Ellis is going to be like. Really? Yeah. Why? What? He just, he has, like, like already, he's a smart ass. He has, like, snark to him. You know, if I'm like, hey, you need to eat, he goes, calm down. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. Calm down. Yeah, and I go. Calm down. Yeah. I fucking love this kid. And I go, don't you. Calm down. Don't you tell me to calm down. He goes. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I, I already can tell. I feel like he, I know he's going to be like, you know, he's going to be like 16. Like, what kind of car? And I'll be like, you can get like an Accord. And he'll be like, how about an Aston Martin, bitch? And like, he's going to be a a smart ass whereas julian's gonna be like sure dad do you know what whatever you, goes do you know what he'll this georgia always wants to drive like wherever pulling into the house she goes hey can i drive the last little bit she at 14 and i'm always like yeah yeah one time oh i said to georgia i go hey i gotta move the cars and she goes you want me to move the bmw and i go yeah yeah move the bmw and Leanne goes hold on hold on don't just put her in a car by herself. I go, babe, all she's doing is backing it up and moving it forward. And she goes, I'd rather someone be in the car with her. And I go, fine. I go, old drip pants over here wants to be in the fucking car with you, Georgia. <laughs> so Georgia gets in the car with Leanne. 
I'm in the I'm in the truck and I'm waiting for them to back up and I hear Argh! Georgia put it in reverse and stepped on the fucking gas and it was it didn't even move the wheels just went Argh! and hit the brakes Leanne looks around I look back Georgia's eyes are like this and she's like huh, huh, huh. both of them out the car switch seats Leanne backs it up I was like holy fuck so she spun out in the spun dri- out in the fucking driveway Man. dude spun out dude let me ask you this before we this, I don't know when this is going to come out, but we were talking recently about the Sober October Challenge. Oh, what yeah. are we going to fucking do, man? We're going to do whatever Joe wants. <laughs> it's clear. It's, it's clear. Like I got to tell you, I really am into the hip hop thing. I, I was too. And I think it would be fun and I think it would be different. And I think we're all at a level playing field. But I think here's the problem is that I, maybe like I think Joe's so enmeshed in dealing with guys like David Goggins and Cameron Haynes and Eddie Izzard and that guy that hiked across Antarctica that I think part of him looks at it and goes, I don't have the time to commit my life to go walking across. Like I got, I don't have that kind of free time, but I do have this one month where I get to test myself and push my limits. And I think, I think he looks at us and goes, I want them to test themselves and push their limits. Yeah. I think that's what it's about. And if that's what it's about, I'm fine with it. I I'm, don't want to do the running. I, I'm fine with the running. Like, I'm, I don't dislike it. I, I actually don't dislike it. I dislike the no social media. Only because Ari does, isn't thinking it through. He's not using his fucking brain. And by the way, he's lying to himself. He goes, I, I never use social media. Go on a vacation with him. He's on his iPad the whole time. And then going, hey, can I use your phone? Can I use your phone? Can you, can you get Wi-Fi? How do I get Wi-Fi on this? Can I use your computer? My computer doesn't work. My charger doesn't. He's on social media non-fucking-stop. Yeah. He just says he's not because he's got a T7 phone. So, like, <clears throat> I mean, I, I understand. Like, I think I'm not, I'm not on my phone as much as I think people assume. Because I don't read comments. I just post videos, put out content. And that's it. Like I'll put out a tweet if I think it's cool. And then I don't read comments. Like yesterday I wrote, I wrote, I think I wrote sober October hip hop dance or, uh, or running. And it was 70% said hip hop dance. 30% said running. But I think it's also, it's like, it's like, I think, look, quite honestly, we're doing this and we're sharing it on Joe's podcast. It's Joe's podcast. That's true. If he wants to do running and that's the thing that will get him inspired yeah. to compete in it, I'm definitely down with that. But I think he's, at, at, you know, he's just seeing how far he can push himself. Cause he's definitely he, going to smoke us all. Oh yeah. But like, see, that's, but that's like, that's the thing in my brain where I go, I'm never, look, I'm not going to play in the major leagues. Okay. I'm not going to play for the PGA tour. I'm never going to get in a cage fight. I probably won't even get in a fist fight. There are very few things that I get to test myself in, yeah. in this world. Yeah. And the one definite one is testing yourself against Joe, who quite honestly is at an, a level of athleticism that none of us are even close at. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but we can- But we get to tug on the tiger's tail a little bit and true. see how my, close we can get to My it. point is this though, he's going to be like, like he's like, we're going to war and he's gonna do some shit like when he did the, uh, the point, you know, he would do like six hour workouts. Yeah. So he's just going to be like, Hey, I did run 30 miles today. And yeah. like, and you're going to be like, you know, let's say you get in 15, you're going to be like, okay. And then he's going to be like 30 the next day. Like he's going to do that shit to the point where you're just going to be like, okay, but we're not, we're not competing. Like it'd be different if it was you, me, Ari, Hey, let's do a run thing. That's different. Because there is one athlete who is just a different level athlete. He is a different level athlete. But I think that's where, look, uh, I mean, I'm not to like, but I've definitely, my, the first, right after we did Sober October, I came home, got a fight with Leanne, came home, uh, back to our house, and I went to sleep, and I woke up with the panic that I had last October. Uh-huh. Like that, that, like, in the middle of the night going, I got to run. I got to, I gotta, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm wasting my life. <laughs> and remember, remember, this is a challenge about, this is just, you know, you know the feeling I'm talking about. Yeah, of course. This is just a challenge on who's got the most free time. In a lot of ways, it is. It's just a challenge on who has the least amount of time. But it's also like the, like preparing yourself for the month leading up. You know what I mean? Like just jumping into that heavy physical stress. Dude, it, it will look, don't get me wrong. If we decide running and, and I, and I, I think we should pull the trigger now because we need to prepare our bodies 
Yeah. We got to prepare our bodies hardcore for the month of October. Fuck, drinking has become a sidebar in this. No one even knows that we don't drink and do drugs. No one even gives a fuck. No. It turns into this physical challenge, and we have to drop weight. And you know what We've got to get our legs ready. Here's the other thing that, <clears throat> that I think, that I think, you know, that you never know, man. Injury's a motherfucker. Oh, you, that, that's the one big factor. And Joe was going to go so fucking hard. Right, he could... He could Hurt his knee. Remember hurt his yeah, ankle. last year when he was like, I, I think I'm, I think I hurt myself, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I think I've got the fucking rebobs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. My kidneys it's, are shutting down. You know, my kidneys are shutting down. I'm pissing Coca Cola. Is that bad? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, uh, maybe we should all slow down a little bit. <laughs> and I remember writing, my heels hurt. <laughs> no, dude. If we get into a run, here's the thing. You know who's going to be the surprise again, though? Ari. Yeah. 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 The, the dude weighs like 180 now. Yeah. And he's just I'm, like. I, I, no, all, Ari will work the system. See, we're talking about mileage. So we're, we'll, we'll find some sort of fitness tracker that will count our steps. And those steps at the end of the day will add up for the mileage that we put in. Now, obviously, the, the, if you can Cam Haynes it and do uh, 13 miles of breakfast and 13 miles of dinner. It's not happening, it's, dude. But if you can, if you can get yourself to a light enough weight with good leg strength. And that's where I'm, I've done a lot of thinking about this in the last two days. Me and you have not more leg strength than Joe, but where our legs are used to carrying around bigger frames. Yeah. So if we drop the weight, all of a sudden our legs became become high performing machines. Just go with me, okay? Uh, you ever see like a really obese person that loses weight? And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow, whoa! How come your calves are so big? And yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I used to be three hundred pounds. You're yeah. Like, Shut the fuck up. Yeah. So we need to be doing body squats and getting our legs used to this frame. Then when we lose weight, our legs will be like, I feel great. I feel great. How? When are we losing this weight? We're gonna lose it. It's, it's coming up. It's gonna be after I get back from Australia. Okay. And so, Joe, Joe, his legs are pretty strong already and pretty flexible. Okay, Ari though, his legs are only I don't know, man. <laughs> I wish I could fucking frame this the in thing my that, head. The thing that's fucked is that I bet Ari can run like the fucking wind. No, <laughs> like Ari, Ari's gonna can. fucking Ari's gonna fuck the system again, and he's gonna do what he's gonna do what he did last year. He's and built like a fucking marathon runner. He'll just man. walk very fast everywhere, like his dad walked the marathon. Yeah, Ari will walk everywhere in new york mm, i have a spot uptown i'm gonna walk it 77 yeah. blocks yeah yeah you just walk uptown and those that and mileage, it's a city built for walking and, too. and that mileage will count hey, what, what we'll need to do is you have to already, set aside time every uh, fucking my day. tour bus will drop me 30 miles outside every city <laughs> <laughs> which which month is it for me october it's you're a fucking in europe but think about this let's oh, upside boy. this let's upside this yeah because i texted joe this morning about swimming and he was like it, it was, didn't seem like he was receptive to new ideas. <laughs> so, so, so upside this, dude, you'll see Europe. Yeah. You're going to be jogging through Hungary, cobblestone streets, rolling your ankle. I'm pulling up my October calendar. I mean, let's see where I let's start. Let's take a look at my October oh, calendar. Fucking A, man. If I'm running this whole month, I start the month. Okay, my first, well, I'm in town for a week. Then Des Moines, Lincoln, Nebraska, Sioux City, Minneapolis, Fargo. Yeah, and then, I, and then I have a break, and then I have the European run. Okay, let me take a look at my, my October is aggressive. I can guarantee it. Um, let's see. October, starting with October 3rd, Oklahoma City. San Antonio, Houston. Okay, the hottest fucking cities in the world to run outdoors. That's in. horrible. North Carolina, ball sweat. Charleston, South Carolina. Oof. Fucking Jacksonville. Fort Myers. Oh my God. And then I get a break in Syracuse. What a beautiful city to jog through. I can run through the college and that's it. Fucking Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo. Pittsburgh. Virginia Beach. Montclair, New Jersey, Huntington, New York. God, I can't wait for this running challenge. And then I have November 3rd off. Dude, you might, you might get down to like fucking 190. What if I do my special and I'm 190 and everyone's like, oh, why would you? Of course he lost weight. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of is that I'm going to look, look ripped. And I'm really, <laughs> I'm really nervous. I'm going to get so fucking yoked. 
Then everyone's like, oh, look at Joe Piscopo up there. Yeah. I get some tattoos and look cool. Will you get tats? Oh. oh. Would you get tats? Yeah. Yeah, I already want one. I want a tattoo of Florida on my face. It's my first tattoo of face tat of Florida. Leanne would really be cool with that. Dude, that's the most Florida thing you can do is get your first tattoo on your face. Would you really do that? Yeah. I want it. Do it. I want it. After this special, I'm thinking about shaving my head and getting a uh, face tat. And what about body-wise? Would you do any, do a sleeve or something? Chest piece? I'd probably start stomach. Start well, stomach. What would you put there? Bert. <laughs> Just in case people forgot. Oh, the guy with his shirt off. Oh, that's Bert. What about the, on the back? Would you do anything on the back? How much, for, how much, how much per tattoo would you sell to advertisers? Well, that, that you could do now? Yeah, to get Warby Parker's tattooed right here. I think you could charge a premium. That's coming off every show. They're, they're getting free advertising every show. Why don't you reach out to like Tide or something, like a Fortune 500 company? Dude, I, th- I tried to, t- I hit my agents up and I was like, hey, I want to sell my career to sh- Shark Tank. And they're like, what do you mean? I go, I want to go on Shark Tank and offer up my career as a business plan. Because I think with their seed money, I can build my business. And they were like, okay, how much would you sell your business for? And I go, $500,000. They're like, you're you're worth more than $500,000. I go, I am? And they're like, oh, yeah. What, are you serious? I was like, I was like, well, I, I didn't know. I was like, well, what is it, like a million dollars? And they're like, you're worth more than a million. I go, two million. And they're like, okay, you're not, we're not putting you on Shark Tank. <laughs> and then they would just own your career? <laughs> yeah, well, no, they get, a, they get a portion of my earnings. I got you. Like, we'd split my earnings, you know, 80-20. I, I didn't think it through, obviously. Okay. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, uh, what I love about what you have and what I want to do is I want to create a small team mm-hmm. that travels with me, that shoots stuff, that records stuff. Like, I, th- I feel like we could be putting out content so much more, yeah. myself included, my, yeah, myself no. mostly. I think about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do a couple uh, short things coming up here, like that we film, like a short film, basically sketches. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's the stuff I like to do. We should but. shoot something after this. Okay. To help promote tour dates. Oh, what do you what do you got? Oh, when when do we when are we gonna start releasing these? I don't know. What do you think, man? When do you think? Blue band? Let's do it before July twenty seventh, because I'll be at the Met in Pittsburgh in Philadelphia. So wait, when do you get back? I get back. Um, I think we worked June, that out on July first. July first. Okay. Yeah. We could put these out in July, maybe. Yeah, let's put them out in July. Um I'm so proud of myself for not drinking. I took an Uber here. I was hungover. I was like, I'm definitely fucking drinking today. But now I get to run. Lose weight. Dude, how much do you think we'll lose if we run for a month? Well, I think what we're, I think we're going to get down. I think we'll st- we're getting our bodies ready. Because if you just start running like that, you're going to get stress factors yeah. factors in your leg. You'll get plantar fasciitis. You'll get shin splints. It's, it'll, you'll fuck yourself. <clears throat> so we'll have to build to it. And I think what I'm, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And we should both do this together is get a, get on a plan to run a marathon October 1st. So do like two months of training where you get ready to get ready for a marathon October 1st. And then I really think, I really think if you put in, look, I think you'll be shocked how much, much mileage you can put in. If you did a solid morning of running and then just were cognizant of walking everywhere, I think you'd be amazed at how much mileage you could put in. Because that, I think if I'm not mistaken, that's Joe's challenge is, is mileage throughout the day. Because it can't just, I mean, if he wants to do just running, yeah, then. You know what our big advantage is against oh, him, what? even though we're all busy? We're younger? <laughs> yeah. Even though we're all busy is that he loads up his calendar with, shit every day pretty yeah. much all day like that guy does like three podcasts that are each three hours long yeah so it's actually like you said that the time factor is um like because he, he he'll have to schedule his runs like really mm-hmm. schedule them mm-hmm. um he will li- literally have to but but he's the kind of person who's like i guess i just won't sleep for one day yeah that's true that's true i think i think we have to build i think we have to sincerely like get ready for October if we're gonna do this running challenge. But here's a question, is it straight running? Meaning like, like, uh, like, all right, and go, and then you run, or is it Fitbit, who logged the most mileage that day? 
It's going to have to be mileage. It's going to have to be because Ari will just walk around New York. Yeah. And he'll he'll log tons of footage, but or tons of mileage. But I think you'll be shocked with how much mileage you can add up if you are just cognizant to walk everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there's things in our neighborhood that I could just like, you know, always walk to Dude, for that when, month. <clears throat> when I when I'm right before my 40th birthday, I dropped like 40 pounds in a month. In like in 29 days, I dropped like 40 pounds. And <laughs> all it was, I know, right? Well, a lot of it's water weight. A lot of it's water weight. A lot of it's not drinking and your body just going. <sighs> yeah, my body doesn't do that. But See, once I cut the booze out, my body starts going, oh, we're back, baby. So you could also walk to that donut shop. Oh, my God. Dude, that donut shop, Blinkies. Yeah. Dude, I went in. I take Georgia to school. She's doing finals. Yeah. I drop her off at school. You know, it's like a famous L.A. spot. Right? I know that yeah. now. Yeah. I come back, I grab Blinkies on the ride home. I wake up Isla. She doesn't have school that day. I open Blinkies. Isla lights up, right? She's yeah. like, oh, we destroy half a dozen easy. And then she says, we should get these for our, we're going to a party that night. We should get them for the party. I go, okay. So I go to pick up Georgia school and I stop by Blinkies one more time. And I walk in, the lady goes, you again? <laughs> and I go, yeah. She goes, not a lot of people get two dozen in one day. <laughs> I was like, well. I said, they're really good donuts. And she's like, all right. And then she loves them. And she goes, give them an extra one. And she gave me one. It's like, it's like a, it's like a bear claw almost. Yeah. Like a, and it's got jelly inside it. Isn't it crazy? Cause when I picked those up, when I came here uh, for the first one, it's crazy that you, you have a box full and they're like, eh, it's uh, $18. You're like, that's it. Like to get that much, I mean, it's not health food, but I'm saying you get that much and it's not even 20 bucks. Dude. So cheap. You could uh, get three dozen, four dozen. My mouth is watering. It is w watering. That feeling, we were at Georgia's softball party and they made these things called slut brownies at a softball party. I was like, ladies, what about empowerment? And so I had one, it was a uh, cookie on the bottom, uh, fudge in the middle, brownie on top yeah. with uh, white sugar. You bite into it and your ma the top of your mouth starts tingling and your eyes go back in your head and you're just like, oh, uh. oh God, oh fuck, <laughs> oh, oh. I, you know what I was saying? I was trying to write a joke about- uh, uh, Jews? No, dolphins. Dolphins? Uh, we go into a dolphin encounter, going to a dolphin encounter is a lot like going to a strip club. You can tell the girl, they don't want to be there. The manager's like, ladies, we got customers. And they come out like, uh, uh, uh. And they're like, uh, and, the, and then my daughter's immediately like, um, can we touch them? And I was like, I already know the answer to that. And the guy's like, yeah, but don't put your fingers in their holes. And we're like, yep, that's the rules around here. And then I was thinking, they, they, they say, don't touch below the dolphin. Don't touch the dolphin's dick. Because yeah. you, they'll, they they'll want try you to, to jack, fuck you. They yeah. try to fuck you. They want you yeah. to jack them off. How great would it be? Let me see your dolphin impression of a dolphin coming. A dolphin coming? Yeah, like I want to see you as the dolphin. <laughs> oh, oh, faster. <laughs> when was the last time you were at a strip club? The other night. Really? Where? In uh, Norway. You went to a strip club in Norway? Yeah, Norway. Was that the last place I was? No, uh, where's Christiania? And uh, it's wherever that is. Sweden? We went, I didn't tell you about this. We, no. We went in um, We went in to this one place called uh, Waterloo. And the guy's like, and we go, hey, is there a bank machine in there? And he goes, no. Nah. I go, you don't have a bank machine in a strip club? He goes, no, why would we? I was like, well, you guys are, I was in my head, I'm like, I already don't want to go to this strip club. It's like, if, I can't just double up and go, I need more money. Yeah. So he goes, there's one around the corner. So we go around this one the, around the corner. And there's one called Secrets right next to the bank machine. I go, and Mark Norman goes, let's just go to Secrets. So we walk in and we go to the guy and we're like, he looks like Boss Root and he's just this big guy. And we're like, hey, uh, is it fun in there? And he goes, yeah, kind of. And we're like, okay. We're like, how much is the cover? He's like 50 euro or whatever. I don't know what it was. And we're like, all right, do, do they get fully nude? And he goes, uh, yeah. And we're like, do, do you serve alcohol? And he goes, yeah, guys, but I don't think this is for you. And we're like, hold on, why not? And he goes, our girls are like, they're looking for more of a commitment. And we're like, okay, we're, not, we're definitely not looking for a commitment. And he goes, you know, they want to spend time with you, get to know you, you know, like 
his English was bad. What he was trying to say was, they take you down to the room and jack you off. Yeah. But all we heard were like, so we got to get to know them? Yeah, like, we got to. Do we have to date them? We have to date Like, what are they going to take us to a private? He goes, private room. And we were the couch where you get to know them. And we were like, so it, like we'll get down there and she'll be in her pajamas. Like, I thought we'd catch up on Game of Thrones. <laughs> and So where'd you end up going? We went back to fucking Waterloo. And we were the only dudes in there. And the girls just swarmed us. And they were like, you dance now? You dance now? Huh? No, you, I can jack you off. And so I said, I, I said to Mark Norman, I go, here's a hundred bucks. Go have fun and tell me if they jack you off. And he came out and he goes, they don't. And I was like, okay, I'll take a, I'll take a lap dance. Because <laughs> in my head, I was like, I, was like, I don't want to be in there. Get, that's the one, the one joke I wrote I haven't fucking told. Uh, I told that night, the next night on stage, is I, I love my wife. Ah, oh, fuck. I love my wife. I wish I didn't. Uh, I went to a strip club in Norway, wherever the fuck we were. I went to a strip club in Norway and she texted me. She said, where are you? And I'm not going to lie to her. I go, I'm in a strip club. She goes, are you getting a lap dance? And I wrote, no. And she wrote back, faggot. <laughs> <laughs> that's really? why I, yeah, that's why I love my wife. Is I was laughing so hard. And she's yeah. like, get a fucking lap dance. You're in Norway. And I was like, done deal. Done. Yeah. Done. And that's why I had to go, Mark, see if they jack you off. And he was like, they don't. They don't. I was like, did you try? And he's like, I mean, I'll just say I did not try. <laughs> All right, we close this show with yeah. our best virtue signaling tweets that uh, we can isolate to camera. Ready? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, virtue signaling tweet. Oh, you got to say it. It was, the number one virtue signal is about Trump. Oh, let's see if you can do the trifecta virtue signaling tweet. Okay. Um, enough, America. Wow, this is really horrible because now there's going to be this isolated audio of me just into the camera. And someone could just pull it and go, this is what Burt Kreischer thinks. <laughs> okay, you got to sell it to the camera, okay? okay? All right. Enough, America. I'm done with this narcissistic clown who's running our country with one gun in this hand and a coat hanger in this hand. Enough, America. That's a good virtue signaling. Trait, that was right? pretty good. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Go, go, try one. Okay. And sell it, sell it. Okay, okay, hold on. Um, all right. Everybody needs more guns. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna flip my virtue signaling tweet okay. to that way. Okay. okay, okay. Calm down, guys. Guns don't p kill people. People kill people, and that is why we need to outlaw abortion. That's a good one. That was right? a really good. That's you a combined it all. Good one. Okay. Um, America. Women shouldn't have the same jobs as men or the same pay because they're fucking stupid. Okay, I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna top that. I'm gonna top that. Okay. Pump your brakes, ladies. These are big decisions for big brains. We'll decide who and when you get your abortion. <laughs> Try, try to top that. Try to top that. Try to top that. <laughs> try to that was really good. Try to top that. Try to top that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> hey, Muslims. Oh, you win. You win. Keep going. Keep going. I'm going to try to top this. This is Western society and Western culture. We wear shirts and jeans. We fuck outside and we eat bacon. <laughs> If you don't like it, go the fuck down. Look a look a look a land. <laughs> okay. And get out of Congress. There you go. Okay. How's that? Okay, but I'm gonna try to make it uh, shorter to fit into the like. This is this is what you said. Yeah. But this is even dumber and more to the point. Okay. okay. All right. Hey Muslims, Hulkamania, look it up. <laughs> Um, do one to Bernie Sanders. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. 
Hey, feel the burn, old man. This is fucking <laughs> capitalistic society. Your socialist bullshit doesn't work here. Maybe head up to Vancouver or one of those faggy cities <laughs> over the border. Are we even going to use these? I don't know. How about this? How about this? Hey, I thought we're doing a bit. Yeah, we're doing a bit. We're doing a bit. Hey, uh, hey, Bernie, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> And stop being so Jewish. <laughs> I think it's a nice one to wrap up That's on. That's a good one to wrap up on. <laughs> okay. this, is a, this is a show called That Was Our Careers. <laughs> My name's Bert Kreiser. I'm, I'm Top Segura. Thanks, guys. We'll uh, see you guys in a couple weeks. Rate, review, and subscribe. <laughs>